to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to a well-designed business. Today's show is sponsored by Jaypore Living. I certainly hope you heard last week's episode, number 526, where I had the most amazing conversation with Asha Chaudhry, the CEO of Jaypore Living. Asha told us the incredible story of her father, her family, and the mission and the vision behind Jaypore Living. If you have not listened, I really do encourage you to go back and listen to it. I'm 100% certain that you're not going to be disappointed. And please also go Go to jpoorliving.com forward slash Luann to open your trade account and begin your relationship with this admirable company. That's J-A-I-P-U-R living.com forward slash L-U-A-N-N. All righty. So today... I have Krista Waterworth Alterman with me. Krista is the CEO of Krista Home, located in Palm Beach, Florida. Originally from Connecticut and trained in New York at Parsons School of Interior Design and a Master's of Fine Arts from the New School in New York City, Krista is known for her highly acclaimed HGTV shows, Save My Bath, and Splurge and Save. She's also been featured on the Food Network's Restaurant Impossible and DIY's The Vanilla Ice Project. There she was on the show for seven seasons. Selected as one of the designers for the prestigious Kips Bay Showhouse in 2019, Krista has also won two 2018 American Society of Interior Designers Crystal Awards, a 2018 Lux Residential Excellence Award, and three 2017 American Society of Interior Designers Design Excellence awards. This lady is the real deal, okay? Krista leads her company with purpose and clarity. We talk about what is your mission, what is your vision, what are your goals as an entrepreneur and the leader of your firm. This is the kind of CEO that has taken the time to figure out these things for herself. And as you listen, you will hear how it guides every decision she makes from client interaction to creating, training, and leading her team. Let me introduce you to Krista and see if you agree with me. Hi, Krista. Thanks so much for joining me on a well-designed business today. Well, thank you for having me, Luann. I'm so, so excited. I am too. I said, you know, I, we were saying how I was sort of stalking you on Instagram <laughs> and then invited you to be on the show. I just love, um, what's interesting is through Instagram and then of course going to your website, I loved the way it looked like you were doing business, right? That's like, you know, we all know Instagram isn't necessarily real, but in the half hour or so that we have just been chatting and getting to know each other, I, I know that um, you are an outstanding businesswoman and I'm so looking forward to having this conversation because I really think it's going to be so helpful to all of us. So thank you so much for taking your time to come on the podcast. Uh, program with me today. I love that introduction. Thank you. <laughs> and it, it has been super fun talking with you for the last 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, right. So now we're going to do it some more. Yeah. So here's the thing though, like everybody knows that when I have a conversation with um, anyone on the show that we can go anywhere organically, but I'm always like to start at what I think is the heart of your particular superpower. And when I looked at your business from the outside looking in, one of the things that really intrigued me was the 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 team that you've built so you have a coo her name is fran you have an interior design director 
Pam. You have an interior design coordinator, Sarah. You have a design assistant, Builder Services, Lucy. You have director of marketing, Jen. And you have design assistant, Furniture Services, Christy. And I, number one, I was like, those are very specific titles. I love that. And I know. Oh, and we just hired, we actually oh. just hired one more. Oh, <laughs> who's that? <laughs> Um, Hattie actually is another one of our design assistants that just started um, on Monday. Oh, how exciting. All righty. And does yeah. she have a little subtitle like the others, like builder services or furniture services, or is she strictly design assistant? She's going to be floating between both the furniture and build service. Okay. But we have her now working on we have her now sort of working on our smaller clients at the moment. Okay. So so this is awesome because this really intrigued me. And I thought with titles so specific, that started to say to me, this is a firm that has taken the time to really lay out job descriptions give people clarity on what they are responsible and accountable for in their day to day. And I know from my experience in business that, you know, from look, 38 years in business, I've had positive and negative experience with this. I can certainly recall times when an employee hasn't risen to what my cousin Eileen Han calls exceptional. And often it's because we haven't, I'm going to use the word that you, you just, you just have used with me off air a couple of times. It's your word. We haven't empowered them properly to do their job by not starting with a clear job description. And thankfully now we are a lot better at that, but we've learned the hard way how important it is. And it looks like to me, Krista, that you've kind of, you know, you zeroed in on this. So would you agree with that, that you have clear job descriptions for each of the people on your team and that they understand them as clearly as you do? Absolutely. Cause teamwork makes the dream work. You know, it's, it's really true when that statement alone and we've worked so hard at streamlining, you know, kind of how we figure out who is responsible for what, and the way we did that was deciding and figuring out how we streamline our business. Mm. Um, and, you know, with a marketing director as talented as Jen, we have leads pouring in on a regular basis. Um, and so we had to really figure out how do we um, provide service to all of these clients or hopefully at least the ones that we really want to work with and how do we do it in a way that is fun and empowering for everybody so that we love coming to work. <laughs> right, right. Happy, you know? you know, forget happy wife, happy life, happy employees, happy business, right? <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. And so we had to really figure out not only from a perspective of um, possible clients or, you know, future business, but also how do we figure out how to bring out people's natural inclinations um, and natural expertise so that they're passionate about what they do. And that that really is you know, a fishing, um, a fishing um, process where we're kind of just going in and trying to uncover who everybody is and what they're really good at. Mm. It takes a little bit of a trial and trial and error. Um, but, you know, if you do it right, you're really able to, to uncover those gems within everybody's personality and everyone's expertise. Yes. Well, I know that when, um, you know, my, like, again, I mentioned my cousin Eileen Hahn, who is one of the co-authors in the second book, um, she always has, uh, she always has us do a personality assessment profile for every potential hire. And what has happened is over the years, as we have had her coaching, when we hire I cannot tell you how it has streamlined the hiring process and how it has um, benefited us by having the right people in the right places so that they are, to your point, doing the things that fulfills them and makes them happy. And so it's like, you know, in the assessment profile that she uses, the 
indicators are a high A personality or a high D personality, yada, yada. It doesn't mean type A. It's a different type of a designation. But, you know, a high D personality is a person who has a very, very, very high sense of detail. And so there are positions within my company where that is critical. It's a non-negotiable if you do not have a high attention to detail. But there's other positions where it is less necessary. And so it's awesome because as a business owner, you go and you have these interviews and you have this process and you might really hit it off with somebody and not really, you, you have blinders on and don't realize that you know, your office administrator or your furniture procurement person in your business, that's a specifically detailed position, right? You can't have somebody that's like, my goodness, with these details, they make my, my brain hurt, right? Absolutely. And I've had people in the wrong positions before. And I find that if you just kind of work together to figure out where your talents lie, you can you can actually get more out of them, more positive um, efficiency and excitement out of them by just slotting them into the right space. Exactly. exactly. Um, and for me, it's, yeah, and for me, it's really about my company singing without me micromanaging because mm. interior designers tend to be amazing micromanagers and I tend to be that personality. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. Mm. Um, but I, I want it to be able to, I want my company to always rise to the occasion and be able to function without my presence. Right. And that comes with, you know, cause I can't be everywhere all the time. So that's, that's sort of an ongoing, um, ethos company ethos where I'm, I want everyone to feel empowered. I want everyone to feel excited and kind of own what they do. And know that when somebody calls on the phone and they're asking for whatever they're asking for, that person knows exactly who is in charge of that area. Mm. And that's that's really – and I think that's empowering all around. I love that. You, you know, know, and it's it's funny because I when I do my presentations um, to various organizations in and out of the industry – one of the things that I often explain is that it is imperative as a leader to identify your company mission and core values. And I know that often sometimes people feel like, well, I can skip this step. But to your point, what I always express is if not only does each employee in your organization need clarity on their role, but they need clarity on your mission and your vision for the company as the leader of that company because my exact argument for it is in your place – they can perform their duties and not feel like I've got to go check with Krista. Like this client is on the phone and they're upset and they're complaining about X, Y, Z. And I'm not sure what Krista would want us to do about this. But if you, if we teach them what's most important to our company, what's how we treat our clients, how we treat our vendors, how we express ourselves, how we handle ourselves, then they can go ahead and, like you said, sing without you. They can do their job, right? Absolutely. And I feel like – and it's really imperative for me to continue learning and growing, not only as a company owner and a team leader, but also growing so that, you know, our mission is is – is always growing, you know, who we are, our company ethos comes down to what in particular, you know, and for us right now, it's about service. Um, and we're actually, um, my COO, Fran just brought up and bought us all this book called three words for getting unstuck. And mm. it's, it's really about this, le um, this yes. And philosophy, ah. which is what they use in improv comedy, um, in order to keep a scene going, you say yes and, you know, because when you say no, that's it. Right. <laughs> the scene's over. Um, and so that's really about being solution oriented and how do we answer problems not only with our clients, but with each other within the company itself. So the mission has to be about service for us and yes and. Always saying yes and. How do we figure out how to manage whatever problem arises. And a lot of them do all day long. And, um, you know, that's the hardest part about what all of us do. 
Mm. It's just is managing problems, managing issues. And for me, for the team to be able to sing on their own, I can actually get back to designing because most what happens as your company grows, you become a business manager, you become, right. you know, more of um, a chief executive officer and less of a designer. Right. Exactly. You know, and um, and I have passion for both, but I, I really I don't ever want to be not, you know, I don't ever want to be missing out on designing right. um, and creating. It's so, so funny, fine. the yes and. Um, about three Mondays ago, we had our, one of our Monday morning meetings at Window Works, and I did 15 minutes on yes and. I was just like, guys, we need a little more yes and instead of no buts. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I just, and the thing was, we just, well, you know, look, it's, these are, the, this is behind the curtain in running a business. Every day isn't a great day, right? Every day the team is not necessarily all happy, go lucky, and everything is fine. And for us at Window Works, you know, we are the holidays for all of us in the industry the holidays are stressful because you guys are trying to get your installs completed you're trying to get everything ready for people for the holidays and and we are as well but i might have a hundred clients that are that are getting installed in the month of december not three not five you know what i mean and so we are particularly pressed during the thanksgiving and christmas holidays um and you know, there is you, nobody can say, well, I can't get there Tuesday. Can we just push Christmas to Thursday? It's like the people want their stuff. You know what I'm saying? And so leading into the end of the year, it gets a little dicey. You know, it gets a little. And I just did this whole pep talk thing like, yes, and guys, yes, and like, I get it's hard. I get it's, you know, crazy. Hang on three more weeks. We're going to get there. You know what I mean? And my friend Vita, who also runs a window treatment firm. She calls the, the weeks between Thanksgiving and Christmas the silly season. And I think that's very charitable to call it that because that's not what I call it. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, just think about how it is for us down in Florida and Palm Beach County specifically where people are coming here. Half of our clients are seasonal. Yes. So Christmas and Thanksgiving are like our – wackadoo time yes, you know where yes. everybody's just going home and having a martini every night you know because because <laughs> it's, it's we had literally the week before christmas we had two clients fall off the rails like it was emotional oh. madness happening and you know there was crying and there were there were just everybody is just in that mode where yes things fall apart. I mean, we had 30 clients this past year. So, you Whoa. know, at some point you're going to have, it's just human nature that you have, you know, a percentage of those that are a little impossible or a little painful to, to, to manage. Um, and these are big homes, you know, mm -hmm. so it's a lot of detail. Work. Um, and that's why, you know, it's really important to remind everybody Yes, and but not <laughs> but not to the point where you're being, you know, where you're being abused or, you know, no. you're feeling like, you know, this person is being completely unreasonable and, you know, emotionally jumping off the rails. It's right. so there is but the you truth know, there is, is a way. You know, it's funny about that, though, Christy. I, I know I just cut you off, but I have to just stick it right in there. If, even when the client is off the rails having the response start with yes and is better than no but you know what i'm saying it's like you know it's like yes i understand and i i get it that you're disappointed and we're working very hard to make it happen for you as opposed to no we really didn't make a you know mistake it was this guy who did a mistake you know but we're going to fix it you see this is what i'm trying to teach the 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 designers that i coach and my own team at window works the value of words because both of those sentences actually say the same thing. So it's, no, I'm sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Client. I, you know, it wasn't our firm that made the mistake. Your tile guy, did you forget, but last month he delayed the project by three weeks and now you're expecting me to, to 
make it up and we are doing this to make it up or it's yes i understand that it's been very difficult because the project was delayed and this is how we're doing it like it's it's the same thing but one makes a client feel heard and 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 empathized with and the other puts the client on their back foot right am i right absolutely i totally agree and i think it's 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 almost like a constant reminder of being empathetic, right. you know, because we are dealing with humans. We're dealing with humans who are spending a lot of money, mm-hmm. who are, you know, going through the process of building a home or renovating a home. It's stressful. Um, you know, there's not only financial issues, there's psychological, you know, ups and downs with, you know, letting go of the past and, you know, moving into the future and, you know, kids and, you know, how the family is is part of, of this this whole you know, process. And, you know, so it is a lot, it's a lot happening. And we, I think it's always important. And I try to impart that upon um, the team is that, you know, just, it's about empathy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's about just finding that way into someone's heart. You know what I mean? Because that's going to not only make them feel good, that's going to make you feel good too. Mm. So, um, so there is, there is that, that part of it that's, I think, super important. And whenever I'm hiring, um, we're, we really look for people who we feel, and you kind of know right away who people who are going to fit within the team, right? Um, you can read that, you know, you get to a point in your career and just what we do is read people, right? We listen all day long. That's, Mm -hmm. that's what I say, you know, to my husband all the time. It's, it's really just about listening. People want to be heard. And, um, and so I, it's, it is important to know when you're hiring that that person is going to fit within the puzzle that you're putting together at your team. They have a piece, you know, and they work with everybody else's pieces. Right. You know? Yes, it's true. Uh, and to your yeah. point about all of the issues that a client is going through surrounding an interior design project, you know, those are for the most part positive issues. You know, God forbid you layer in somebody who is doing a renovation or a design project because somebody has developed a handicap or somebody has been widowed or somebody has been divorced. You layer that on it and your empathy and your understanding and your searching, like you said, for in your words, their heart becomes even more important in order to have the project be, co- you know, be collaborative, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And collaboration is huge, not only within the team, like when with it behind the curtain, as you say, Mm -hmm. Um, it's really important to be I've found um, with my clients to be collaborative, because, you know, we are developing projects where, you know, we're designing, you know, 25 to 30 rooms at one time. And it's really important that all of those details can be very overwhelming to people. So we try to make that process really fun and collaborative so they feel that they're part of it. And we, in fact, need them to be part of it, right? Because we need to understand who they are, what they want, what their desires are, what their passions are, and all of that. Um, But I want them to feel part of the design, too. I want them to feel like we're coming together and we're doing this. It's a, we started calling it instead of a design presentation, we started calling it a design lab mm. because it's like a collab, mm-hmm. you know, where everybody mm-hmm. comes together and we make it fun. We're, we're about to move into a new retail workspace because I'm developing product. Um, and we have a big, beautiful, like conference room area with all of our library everything's going to be together and we're going to make it just super fun when our clients come in to you know finalize the work product and almost like a party Mm, that sounds Uh, like that's exciting congratulations that's fun isn't it it, yeah totally totally fun super stressful (laughs) (laughs) but absolutely fun (laughs) you know it's funny because that reminds me one time a designer said to me when do you lose the fear when you make a decision? When do you lose the fear when you're about to spend, you know, make a decision to hire somebody new or to take a new space or to do whatever? I said, 
hello, never. You never lose that fear. That's part of being an entrepreneur. You have to, you have to weather risk. And so, um, you know, when you just said that, it reminded me of that conversation because it is fun and it is exciting, but it's stressful. It's like, okay, should I take this whole big space and do this, right? But you have to make a calculated decision. You have to make it based on all the facts. And for me, at the end of the day, I always have my goddess voice talking to me. It's like, is it right? Or is it not? And to your point, when you said, when you meet somebody, you sort of get a feeling of, are they going to, you know, fit with the other team members? And I find it's whenever we ignore our, our gut instinct, our goddess voice, because something practical would benefit from it. It's like, yes, but I need this person hired now. Or, you know, yes, but... I, I need a design space, a lab space now, but the voice is saying, but this isn't really quite the space, or this is the perfect space for me, and I've always wanted one, but the voice is like, not sure financially I'm ready, even though on numbers it looks like on paper I am. There's there's some level that you have to pay attention to your your voice. Do you agree with that, Krista? I love that you call it a goddess voice. <laughs> That's I call it like my warrior goddess oh, voice. Oh, I like know, that I, one. <laughs> I, honestly, I, I just feel like when you're in fear or when you feel anxious about something, you have to act. Like it's the time for action. Mm. You know what I mean? Because yeah. the only way to sort of move past it, move through it and rise above it is to act, is to do something to propel you forward. Um, and yes, that could be making a decision um, and putting that decision into play. And, you know, that was very much what we did with with the retail workspace. It's, it's like we're opening next to this amazing farm to table, really one of the most popular restaurants in our area. And I was like, that's it. Let's do it. But wow. there's so much there's so many elements about it that are so scary. And with planning, you're right. You have to have a plan, right. and that's really part of the action, you know, um, and it's got to be talked about, you know, at nauseum. You know, I drive Fran crazy because I'm constantly throwing ideas, uh, you know, out to her and just constantly researching, reading, listening to podcasts, you know, talking to people, um, going wherever I can to, to get inspiration on how can I act? How can I find a solution to this to make it go in the direction, the positive traje trajectory where I'd like it to go? And it becomes a little bit of an obsession, but I think that that's the right way when you're feeling in fear or you're feeling scared, you know, is sometimes that is a good thing. It's a positive thing as long as you act. Right, Can't, right, right. Sort of, yeah. You can't be paralyzed and, by it because that is, yeah. yeah, see, see, and that's what I find too is that not everybody should be an entrepreneur. It's there's, you know, it's like, I don't feel like I should be a doctor. I don't feel bad about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's, you know, it's, you just, there's no way I there's no way, right? I, I don't, if somebody could just put all of the information in my head that would equate to all of the education that a doctor could have. So I would wake up and be in my brain, a completely talented, gifted physician. There's no way it would be wasted in my brain. I'd be like, sorry, not doing it. <laughs> like I'm not, I have no desire. And so the thing is, I think because the entry to being an entrepreneur is simply to do it, okay, that people feel like if they're inclined to have their own design firm, that they must also be able to withstand this pressure, this risk-taking lifestyle, this ability to assess risk against not just the things on paper, but what the goddess voice tells you. And the truth is, is that we're not all cut out for it. And that's just okay, right? That's, that's just okay. That's totally okay. And mm -hmm. honestly, I, you know, for me, I want to, I want to take on the design world, you know, I'm ready, <laughs> you know, but some people are like, I just want to, you know, I just want to have a small business. I yes. want to work out of my house. That's and, right. you know, and I think that whatever works for you and that's, that really goes back to just finding what you're naturally good at, what you're naturally driven toward and what you're passionate about. Cause usually what you're naturally good at 
you, you, you grow the passion around that because yeah. it comes naturally to you. And it's fun when something comes naturally and you want to get better at it. So, yeah, I just love all of this. I think it's so important for each of us to, um, you know, have our own little come to Jesus moments with these things and to really evaluate to what you said. If you're ideal, if somebody's ideal, I, I know a lot of interior designers in New Jersey and, and through the podcast that, their ideal business is them as a solopreneur running their interior design firm because it makes it easy for them to manage their personal life, uh, you know, all of the things. And so being an entrepreneur, in my mind, doesn't mean I must have an empire or I must. Des- it just means you have to be- look in the mirror and understand just I love the way you put it. When there is fear is that do you move through it or do you get paralyzed by it? And if you have experienced being paralyzed by a fear that you're encountering with your business, that doesn't mean, you know, throw in the towel. That just means get some help in that regard. You need an advisor. You need a coach. You need a colleague, a peer, another designer, a friend that you can talk to about it so that you don't stay sitting in the fear and that you able to do, just as Krista said, take the action and move forward. So love that advice, Krista. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Now, tell me a little bit about the roles of your team. So I understand as the founder and the principal that you have streamlined your processes and in the process of doing that, you've been able to identify each of the roles that you need so that the processes that support the design projects with your clients are handled. So tell us about, um, give us a few, um, a little bit of description on what each person's role is. So we have Fran as the chief operating officer. Tell us how she functions, what her roles are and how she, you work in relation to her. Well, first I have to say that we, I'm going to tell you about everybody one by one, because I think it's important to understand that this type of growth should happen organically. It can't be forced upon a business. I think, you know, my company started as a bootstrap startup with my husband because Mm -hmm. he was an entrepreneur and he sort of guided me and taught me how to, um, how to run a business. Um, and then once I realized that I could turn my passion into a business as time went on, I realized I needed to get help with that. Now in television, they give you an entire art team, you know? (laughs) And so I, I, I kind of knew and understood early on that I loved working in a collaborative, uh, team environment. You know, some people like to create and design in, you know, in almost like a, a, a vacuum in like a tiny little, you know, um, studio on their own. Um, uh, but I love bouncing ideas off of people. And I, and I, again, I really wanted, I decided early on, I wanted to build an empire. I mm. didn't want, I didn't want a small company. I wanted to create something bigger and hopefully something that will change the design world in one way or another. So I knew I had to do that and build that start small and then, you know, grow from there. And then hiring Fran, you know, as a chief chief operating officer, she really is in charge of all of our contracts. She's in charge of our business operations. She handles all potential phone calls that come in for potential clients. She's amazing at, you know, talking to people and sort of underlying and finding out what their wants and needs are and if they're going to be a right fit for us, because that's really important to know and understand is the client a right fit for the firm, for the studio. Mm-hmm. You know, um, if we know that it's just going to be, there's a bunch of red flags right in the beginning and someone is going to potentially make um, our daily life difficult we don't want that. We want, we want, we want our world (laughs) to be, we want it to be fun to come to work. We want people to be excited to walk through that door in the morning. And I want to be excited to walk through the door in in the morning. You know what I mean? So it's, that is, that's very important. And that's something she really does well. And then she, you know, handles all the business related issues, billing, accounting, and all of that as well. And she's part of like overall strategy, business strategy with me too. I love it. Let me ask you one question before you go on to the um, next position. When, when and how did you decide that Fran was capable of having that intake call and having, does she have 
final say? Like, will she will she not even put somebody to you that she has determined is not a right fit? Or will she put them to you and say, look, I've had the preliminary call. My vote is no, but you see what you think. Or is she like, it doesn't even get to you. You have such faith and confidence in her that it's like, yeah, I had three intake calls today. We're going to we're going to take the next step with one of them. Uh, yes, it's completely yeah. in her hands. I love it. And I that, love again, it. that that's really important. I mean, listen, she went to the Wharton School of Business in Stanford. I so. know I read that. <laughs> So I, I don't mess with her. She knows what she's doing. Um, but she also was a friend of mine. Right. Which okay. is kind so of she, funny. And which is, you know, and I have to say, I think both are valuable. It's one thing. I mean, anybody, you know, it was, I was going to say a really stupid thing. Anybody could go to the Wharton School of Business. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> that is so not true. Um, <laughs> but I was going to say anybody can have the business sense, but I do think that they do need to know you well as as in addition to that in order to determine if it's a right fit for the firm. Because if they have a really good business sense and a sense of themselves, what may or may not be right for them is not necessarily right for the team. And so, but I do think that it's interesting that um, – I, I was not surprised that your answer was that she's the final say. And having read about her background and her number of years and experience in business, uh, my supposition was that, yeah, you probably just like, look, if you say no, it's no. And and that's also a, a great thing and another um, ideal to strive for as a founder and a principal of a business is when you have found a person that you absolutely do trust and spe- even if it's a high level role like that if you trust them you trust them you know I hear myself saying all the time to whoever it is in e- w- either business window works or the podcast it's like okay if you say it I'm done um, you know what? I, I hired you for that expertise. I'm done. You say no. Well, I mean, what do you think? No, I think what you think. We're done. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I love that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But you have to do have um, clarity in what, you know, she, there's probably been many conversations between being your friend and being and working with you on what is a good fit. It's not just, you know, Hey, I'm not in the mood for this client today. You have it enunciated, right? In addition to the personality Absolutely. clashes, right? Yes. I mean, she's honestly, it's, it's about letting go for yes. me. Yeah. It's yeah. about letting go and trusting and, you know, making sure that again, each person owns exactly what they do mm-hmm. and that I completely trust, you know, their, their, what they're going to, what their decision is in the, at the end of the day. Exactly. When exactly. it comes to their area. Yeah. 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 No, you cannot look you, if your ideal and your dream is to own an empire, you're going to have to let go of a few things. <laughs> you know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. So now give me a little bit of, you want to go through the run through the other uh, team members first, and then I have a couple of little questions sure. in between. Go ahead. So Pam is our design director, and she is right below me on the design team. Uh, so she actually is our team leader. She's a senior designer herself. She has a ton of experience and she's our client liaison. And she directs not only our design team, but she handles any of the daily details, um, planning, installs, all of that. And any issues that a client is having will go through her before they get to me. If there's mm. really something she can't do or she feels has, you know, gone, someone's gone a little AWOL, (laughs) she'll, (laughs) she'll involve me at that point. But for the most part, you know, she kind of shields me, um, it frees me up to, you know, all the other things on my plate so that she can kind of handle all of those elements. That's awesome. Uh, and yeah, she's amazing. She works, she's phenomenal with clients. She's always laughing, you know, she loves, you know, and again, that was something we discovered, early on, she really wasn't like our client liaison, but, but I just listened to and asked her, you know, do you, what's your favorite, what are the top three things that you love about your job? I actually put that to the whole team, mm. uh, last year, the top three things that you love and the top and the top three things that you dislike mm. about your position. And that really helped us kind of navigate and streamline everybody's position. And one of the things that she loved the most was talking to the clients, getting to know them and having that, that relationship. 
That's great. So I love that. I love that. I just literally yesterday said the same thing to the two people on my team. Okay, I need to know the things you love and the things you hate. Put it on a list. I have to figure this chess game out. We might be moving things around. (laughs) And I don't want to take something off that you love, and I just as soon take something off that you hate. So let's like give me the list. (laughs) That's awesome. I love it. Uh, And and then you have um, Sarah, and she is the design court interior design coordinator. She is. And Sarah's really in charge of all the product ordering. Okay. And she's also our scheduling expert. So she she's the only one that puts anything on the calendar. Everything that we put on the calendar goes through her. Um, so people aren't really allowed to schedule anything unless she, she arranges it, uh, which is great. So anytime anybody wants to make an appointment or anything like that, it goes right through her. And any product that is ordered, she does all our proposals. She manages the product. She... Uh, manages any issues with product and she helps track it. Uh, She is there for delivery and she kind of, that's pretty much why she is in charge of those, those types of elements because she is, she's really, really good at being almost like a sergeant. You know, she has that, that that personality that, you know, likes to be in charge of these types of, of, of very concrete details and that makes her happy. That makes her sing. She had absolutely no experience in design before she came to my studio. Actually, um, my other design assistants are all very new to the design world. Some of them, one of them, I actually is a is a design school dropout. I asked her to drop out of school so that she could come work for me. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's amazing. <laughs> Well, and the truth is, you know, when you describe what uh, Sarah's position is, it does not require design experience, right? It is the gatekeeper. It is the scheduler, the organizer, writing, you know, um, doing proposals for product. I mean, what's the difference if it's a proposal for a sofa or a toothbrush or whatever, right? Like it just, it's it's having that, that she's probably of high D to my conversation earlier in the beginning and likes to have, as you said, the control over things. Um, one of the things I liked is that she's the only person that can do the calendar. So you don't have somebody scheduling, you know, the wallpaper guy to come before the painter come because two different people have got their hand in the project. That's awesome. Absolutely. And her, her and Pam work very closely together for all of the, our client, you know, deliverables and setting up subcontractors and all of that. So it really, They work great together. Nice. Which is is nice. And now, you know, you have Jen, who is your director of marketing. And you said something in the very beginning of the show. You were like, Jen is so good at her job that the leads are pouring in. That's the sentence I wrote like almost an hour ago, Krista. So what the (laughs) heck does she, you know, you know, everybody went, what? I want one of those. What, what does she, (laughs) what kinds of marketing and outreach does she do for you that results in the leads pouring in? Well, um, Jen was also a friend of mine. So our kids are our friends as well as Fran. All of our kids went to go to school together. Mm. Um, and, um, early on, I think that makes a big difference because there is something else at stake, you know, when Mm. you're working with friends, you know, and you know, something different, you know, something uh, deeper about that person. You have a deeper connection with that person. And that's why I don't understand why people say you shouldn't work with your friends or your family, because if it's the right friendship, if it's a really, you know, positive, healthy friendship, like it, it really helps um, just to create success together. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's just something we have a vision together. We talk well, we speak well, we're able to communicate I can call her, you know, outside of work and talk about work, you know, when we're out on girls night, it might come up, you know, it's it's just, she is just, she went, she went to New York university. I think it's important to have some kind of background that, uh, where, that you've been trained, you know, in these types of areas as a COO and a director of marketing, you need, I think you need to have some kind of of experience or a really great, um, degree Mm. in, in, in either one of the, with the, with those types of high level positions, Mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to design assistants and things like that, I want rock stars on my team 
And I'm willing to cultivate those rock stars, you know, sort of under my umbrella. But when it comes to marketing and, and running the company, you need people with, with some, some chops. Right. So, yeah. And so she worked in New York city for some really, um, big public relations and advertising companies. Uh, she is a phenomenal social media, uh, like champion. Mm. She just knows what she's, she knows what she's doing. She's always, always learning because I feel like in social media, you have to be, you have to have a hunger to always know what's new, what's happening. How do we, how do we rise to the occasion? How, how, how do we come out ahead of what everybody else is doing? And that's, that's also the New Yorker in her as well, to just kind of, <laughs> to strive for excellence, right? And to, to always want to be up front, you mm. know? Um, and so I think that, that, that's, those are two things you really need in marketing is you need, and you need a passion behind the work. And I think that comes not only because she's so good at it, it comes naturally, but it's our relationship too, that takes it to the next level. Well, I think they're key in there. And when you talk about when others will disparage working with friends, the key is what you said, when you have a healthy, positive relationship with your friend. And, you know, look, we're all human beings and we have all have all kinds of friends. And just because I might not necessarily describe every relationship with a circle of, you know, eight or 10 friends as a healthy, positive relationship. It doesn't mean that the relationship doesn't have value and there aren't amazing parts of it. But I think that designation of healthy, positive is, is a, a level higher or to your words, a level deeper. And you do know the ones, the differences and the ones that you have that with and the other ones who are your great friends that maybe you raise kids together, all of those other things. But, you know, when push comes to shove, there might be insecurities or uh, relationship, you know, little ticks there. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's important to recognize that, it's not just being good friends. It's, to your point, healthy, positive, truly deep relationships or high-level relationships. And that that's where you get that magic secret sauce of, you know, Jen and Fran really want the best for you as a human being, for you as a, a company owner, and for their part in helping you create that, they, that, that they know that they benefit from it too. So th that's that's sort of... The, the difference would you agree absolutely and i i want the best for them too it's right like of course symbiotic that way and and then um and then you know like we have a new year's um lunch teamwork luncheon every january and you know both myself fran and jen we all take a part in just telling exciting getting everyone kind of excited about the year what the year will represent not only from a business perspective, but from a marketing perspective, because I feel like that's the third arm of what we do. We have to have great marketing because it's no longer word of mouth. It's just the interior design industry has changed so much that it's so important to have that outreach of, um, you know, of through the internet, through social media, through brand and publicity, um, events and things like that like you know you sort of have to work it on a variety of different angles on the media front yes no i i agree so that's a, that's awesome love it that what a great support you have in the leadership with both fran and jen and then you have two more you have the design assistant who handles furniture service christy and your new design assistant hattie so tell us just a little bit about each of these ladies oh and lucy Oh, I miss Lucy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Design assistant three, builder yes. services. Lucy, right. Okay. Yes, yes. Hattie, we just hired on Monday, and she um, is newly a graduate of design school. Christy is Christy is our furniture service assistant. She's a design school dropout. She probably isn't going to love me <laughs> saying that, but it's only because I forced her to drop out because I was like, I love you so much. You need to be here. Please come work with I us. I can't wait. Um, and she listened. Nice. And she listened and she just wrote the most beautiful thing on her Facebook about being in, in this amazing supportive environment. And she's Aww. just so happy that she took this step and that the new year is so bright for her, you know? Aww. So that was, that was really wonderful to read. And Lucy, um, also just graduated design school. Um, and you know, so she does, Christy handles all our furniture service clients, 
which I think is great. That means she doesn't do AutoCAD drawings, really. She just does furniture AutoCAD drawings. She's not doing any technical work. She's really helping me with those people that just want their home filled with furniture, you know, um, rugs, case goods, you mm. know, upholstery, drapery, all of that. So we do all of that, which we kind of call filling the box. Mm. And then Lucy does... Uh, all of our AutoCAD drawings and sort of like the work that we do for people who are building homes or doing large scale renovations. So she's more t of a technical assistant and she does elevations and build drawings and she's learning V-Ray so we can do our own 3D renderings in house uh, and all of that. So she handles and then she helps also select all of those elements like cabinetry, countertops, flooring, you know, all the build, all the build related elements. And so that it really, and then Hattie is is working on our smaller clients who are just doing, you know, four or five rooms in their house. They're not doing an entire house, uh, which is really really nice because she just started, so we didn't want to like throw her into the lion's den. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she has great technical drawing experience as well. I learned AutoCAD in design school at Parsons, and I I feel. I feel like everybody needs to, everybody on my team needs to understand how to work within, within AutoCAD so that, you know, they can, they can understand how I create. Cause I really use that as a tool for creating, uh, for creating the first elements of my design work. Okay. Um, yeah. I love it. Now, let me just ask you one, uh, one little question before I let you go. So just broad stroke. You are involved in every design project at this point. So even like the, you mentioned the smaller project of four or five rooms, Krista. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, that would be a big project to a lot of people, just saying. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. no, no. And I'm teasing you. You know I'm teasing you. But the thing Listen, is. There was, no, but there was a time when I only designed one room. Right, of people, course, of course. Of, no, the yeah. first years of my, of my career. That Absolutely. Was, you know, that's why I'm teasing you. I thought I thought I could tease you. I hope I could. <laughs> um, yeah, but so, <laughs> so the question though is is <laughs> the way your firm runs. Are you still having that top level view of every project, or are there projects? Because I've interviewed firms like yours that have grown bigger like this, and the answer comes down two ways. Some have have built their firm in such a way that no, you know what? Um, Hattie will work and Pam might oversee her and I might never see those projects or other principals that say, no, 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 no. I might only see the project at the beginning and put my stamp of approval on it and do some mood work on it, yada, yada, and see it at the end. But I'm, I know every project. So where, where are you at with that, Krista? I still oversee everything. Okay. I, I may not. There may be projects that I don't actually do the design work for. Right. But everything is approved by me. Right. Everything's approved by me in the end. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. I have um, interviewed firms that do both, that the principal will say to me, yeah, there's dozens of projects at this point that I don't even lay by eyeballs on, that they are so, you know, the team is, you know, built and, and, and trained in such a way that it's not required. I would say it's less often the case that way. Um, even some of the bigger mm -hmm. firms, Laura Umansky from Laura U was on recently. And, um, you know, she's she just said to us, that she's just seeing that there might be a place where she doesn't see and have hands on every project, but it hasn't happened yet, and she's not sure she's going to do it. But she just said all of a sudden where she couldn't see it before, she could see it possibly. So it's a, it's a, pre a preference for you. But you said two or three times during the interview that you love the design part of it, that you know then recognize as the leader of your firm that you have to be the business owner and the business manager, but that the design part of it is still very exciting and enticing to you. So you're working your in such a way that you still have your hands there, right? Absolutely. And I honestly, I, it's, it's not easy. You know, it's a, we're super busy. Um, and, but I do feel like it's an important part of what we offer, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're, and I feel like I kind of need to oversee just what's, what's being not only developed, but what we're producing, because it kind of, it does have to represent the brand mm -hmm. in some, in one way or another, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But I also, in the end, just enjoy meeting with my 
with my women <laughs> and, you know, chatting about it with them because they have, they have a similar love that I do, mm-hmm. you know? So us getting together and just chatting about our work is really, it's fun. Mm-hmm. So it's part of, it's part of that. We need to have a feeling of accomplishment through each phase of our projects. That's, that brings great human joy to people, having a feeling of accomplishment. And there have to be almost like little accomplishments along the road throughout a project, because we're with some of these people for almost two years. You know what I mean? So it's really important that we each have a feeling or a sense of accomplishment, small accomplishments and small goals that we're meeting throughout the entire project. And, and when we do that together, it brings us even more happiness. I love it. I love it. I think it's just so fantastic. So thank you, Krista, though. I do appreciate your taking your time out of your day to share us about your business philosophies. And it's clear to me that so much of it is just centered in what's important to you as a human being and that you bring it and transfer it to your business. And that is just one of the, um, you know, it's just an amazing accomplishment as a business owner to be able to express what's so important to you as a human through your business and bring it to your team and to your clients. So congratulations to you. Good work. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. I feel like having a philosophy on life that brings you great happiness, if you can carry that into your work too, it's a win-win situation. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Thank you so much, Krista. Thank you, Luann. I loved every minute of it. When Krista and I recorded this episode, it was way back the first week of January. We were not thinking about COVID-19. And even if we were, we were certainly not imagining where we are now on quarantine and shelter in place. That is for certain. However, oddly and interestingly, and of course, because great advice is great advice, Her advice is keenly appropriate now. Krista said the only way through fear is to act. And she added, you have to have a plan because this is the part of the acting. So if you're listening in real time, April 2020, and you are experiencing fear now due to the challenges created by COVID-19, and even if you are listening in the future when this economic crisis is behind us, the message is the same. It is okay to be afraid, but be sure you make a plan and work your way through it, right? Next, did you notice that Krista kept returning to the sentiment of empowering and lifting others up? This is what we say. This is what we talk about when we say, have a conversation with yourself and get clear on your company mission and vision. For Krista, you can see how she filters all decisions through this lens. Is it empowering her team? Is it lifting her clients up? right? For her team, she gives them a gift of having defined roles with purpose so that they can be their best every day and they can be accomplished every day. She calls her design presentations design labs. This helps her clients feel included. They feel privileged to be collaborating. And she also mentioned how she provides her clients with markers of success throughout the process. And this, I'm sure, helps her clients feel proud and happy and supported. Question is, Are you doing any of these things? Is there a way you can take a page from Krista and bring some of these concepts to your firm? Give it a try. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at the unexpected outcomes it brings to your firm. Now, I have a question for you. Have you signed up for your trade account with Article yet? Now is the best time more than ever. Go to welldesigned.article.com and get going. Your clients are home now. They need extra desk space for themselves, their partners, their kids, with everybody working from home, right? Reach out. Let them know that you can help them create productive, inviting workstations for every single person in their house. And with Article, you can legitimately have the pieces in their homes in days, like in a couple of days, not weeks, not months. So yes, you can fast, easy, reliable, deliver stylish mid-century furniture to your clients within the week. Be the hero for your clients. Be the solution that they need right now. And it starts with opening your trade account at welldesigned.article.com. 
Thank you so much for joining me. I do hope that you and your loved ones are safe, and I hope you are using this time to do whatever makes you feel good, whether that be resting, working, dreaming, doing. Just decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.